All right. So now we know how to do slant asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, finding x and y intercepts. So let's kind of all add that together and then sketch this graph. All right. Can we actually uh, factor the numerator? Well, let's see. We're going to have to have a 2x and an x. And then probably a 5 and a 4. 4 won't go with the 2. So if we put a 5 here and a 4 here, that'll give us a 5. That'll give us an 8. And if we have a negative here and a positive here, that should give us our negative 3 in the middle. And then we still have x minus 5 in the denominator. So that looks like the good factored form. And from there, what do we know? Well, we can find the asymptote for the vertical. And so the vertical asymptote. is uh, at x equals uh, 5. And that also helps with the domain. The domain is all real numbers except x equals 5. Okay. Uh, what about uh, intercepts? Well, if we put each one of those equal to 0, we can get x-intercepts. And so we'll have, uh, if we set this one equal to zero, we'll get a negative five halves. And if we set the other one equal to zero, we'll get a positive four. So we'll get negative five halves zero and a four zero. So we have two intercepts. And for y intercepts, uh, we get y. Uh, equals what when you plug in zero for x? Well, if we plug zero here, zero here, we get a negative 20. Zero here, we get a negative five. So we get a negative 20 over negative five. And so that's gonna give us a positive four. So it's a zero four. It looks like for uh, the y-intercept. Um, then what do we know about the degrees here? What kind of a uh, horizontal asymptote? Well. This one is one degree higher than the denominator, so that means we have to divide. Now this one's kind of set up nicely. Let's do synthetic division this time. And so that's going to be a 5, because remember, we divide by x minus k, and k in this case is 5. And so we have a 2, a minus 3, and a minus 20. So this kind of keeps our synthetic division uh, alive here. So bring down a 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 5 times 7 is 35. Add that, that's 15. But all we need is this first part because we don't care about the remainder. And so this is going to give us y equals 2x plus 7. So that's going to be our equation of a slant line. So that's going to be our slant asymptote. All right. Um, what else do we have? I think we got the x intercept, we got that, we got the y intercepts, we got the vertical, we got the slant. So I think we can sketch the graph now. So let's see how good we can draw this. And so if this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right, so we have a 0, 4 for a y-intercept. So 0, 4, so we have a, that point. Um, we've got 4, 0. That so says 2, 4, so then 2, 4, 0. Then we have a negative 2, and a half, 0. So negative 2, and a half, 0. So somewhere about there. Well, I don't want that one. There we go. Um, so now we have that. Now we have uh, vertical asymptotes x equals 5. So that's going to be right through there uh, roughly. And one anymore. That's only one. So we have our slant asymptote, which is y equals 2x plus 7. So we have up 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. And then, then that's going to be our first point if it'll ever let me draw it. Oh, come on. All right. And then up to 1, 2 over 1. And so then 
down one, two over one. So now we can see if we can get this. Not very well. Let's re-race that and try again. All right. So this is going to continue up. And this looks like it's coming down, something like that. And so with the slant asymptote and this, uh, we're going to have all are going to be evens or our odd numbers. So this is going to come up here, come back down here. And then this one is going to come down here and come up here. Okay. And so when we get that slant asymptote, we usually get this kind of a feature like this. And again, it's not, not a good drawing, but that's how it's going to be in this. So it's going to get closer and closer to this, but never reach it. And it's going to get closer and closer to that and never reach it. Same thing going down this way and going down that way. All right, so that is that one sketched. Let's see if we can do another one and then we'll cut the video for that one. All right, so this one there, nice. They actually gave us all of the uh, factored form here. And so what we need to do is just plug in and find out what we have. Um, we can find zeros for x, so the x-intercepts. x equals a minus 2, and so that's a minus 2, 0, and that has a multiplicity of 2. So that's going to cause us to have a um, going up and down or down and up. And then we also have an x is a 5, or if we just go ahead and write it out, a 5, 0 because that was x equals 5. And its multiplicity is 1, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, now, does anything cancel? Numerator, denominator, nothing cancels. So we have uh, some vertical asymptotes, and that's going to be at x equals 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 4. Uh, horizontal asymptotes, well, we have a 2, that's a squared term, times that's a cubed, that's a cubed, and so it's going to be uh, horizontal asymptote, and we just use our uh, coefficients, in this case it's 1 over 1, and so we get y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, what else do we have? Vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Uh, we don't have the y-intercept yet, so let's get the y-intercept. And so x equals 0, so we'll have 0 comma something. All right, so if we plug in 0 here, that's going to give us uh, 2 squared times a negative 5 over. Now we have a negative 3 times a 1 times a 4. So 2 squared is 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And negative 3 times 4, that's going to give us a negative 12. And so 4 will go in here 5, 4 will go in here 3. So that looks like a 5 thirds. Okay. And what else do we know? I think that's about it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start drawing. All right, so vertical asymptotes at 3, negative 1, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so uh, horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Something like that. And we have one x equals 3 for vertical. And one at x equals negative 1. And one at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we've got intercepts at negative 2, 0. And one at five zero, one, two, three, four, five zero. 
Um, y intercept zero five thirds, so that's uh, one and two thirds, so it's about here. All right. And so what do we know about this? Um, at each of these, we're going to have an odd uh, number because uh, those are all just ones. So it means one side's gonna be going down and one side's gonna be going up or vice versa. It's gonna have one side uh, going down over here and the other one going up here. So it's gonna be one of those two. So let's start with our these terms here where we have the uh, actual uh, x-intercepts. So this one's gonna be a squared. So it's gonna hit this point and then it's gonna go the other direction. And it's actually down here. And so this means that this has to come down like this and down like this and and then disappear so it's going to come down like this okay and so because we know it's going to be odd that means since it went down here this one's going to go up so this is going to come down like this now this one's going to come down and it's going to go through our point here and then it's going to kind of come back up here. And then this one is going to come down from here and then go up like this. And and we know that it's going to have to do uh, kind of the way this works just because, you know, this has to come through here. So we know it's going to come down on this side. And so to make this odd here, that means this one had to come back up here. And so that's why we have this. And so because of this point, we get this, and then that one goes up. We know this one had to have the multiplicity hit it here and bounce off, so we come that way. And so this should be our um, graph. Now, if we went and actually plotted it on a calculator, what would we get? So what we have was, we would have x plus two squared times x minus five. Oops, five, not four. And then in parentheses divided by, and then we have x minus three, x plus one, and then x plus four. And our window, I don't know, it's not going to be super big. So let's go from, uh, we can do negative 20, that's fine. Let's see what we have. And so what we had, we had that. We had something that came down through one and a third and went up. We have the one coming down at the two. And then we have the one coming up here. And then we have our horizontal uh, asymptote there. We have a vertical here. We have a vertical there and we have a vertical there. So that looks good. So uh, that's uh, what we what we have here. So that looks good. So um, let's do one last one. Uh, let's do an application and then uh, we'll be done here. So it has the right circular cylinders to have a volume of 40 cubic inches. It costs four cents per square inch to construct the top and bottom, one cent per square inch to construct the rest of the cylinder. Find the radius to yield the minimum cost, let x equal the radius. So what do we know about right circular cylinders? Well, you know, they look something like that. They have a radius r, they have a height, and volume is equal to pi r squared times h, okay? And so let's see, we know the volume is 40 cubic inches, and so 40 is equal to pi r squared h, and what we're solving for is, well, I'm letting x equal the radius, so I guess so I should say that's x instead of r, but um, we can say x or r in this case. That's just what the problem initially said, and I'm going to change it to r. All right, and, but when you plug in your calculator, it's going to be x, so that's why, that's why they say x. And so if we solve this for h, 
that's going to be 40 over pi r squared. Okay, so that's h. And what's going to happen is we're going to do something uh, where we have to figure out what the surface area of uh, each of the items is. So what's the area of a circle? Well, that's pi r squared. Okay. Now, we got a surface area here. We have a surface area here. And so that's what that is equal to. And so we know we're going to have to um, have that piece, but we also need to have an area for this around the whole uh, cylinder thing, like the edges of a can, basically. We have to figure out that. And so that one's going to require knowing what the circumference of this circle is. And then we're going to take that times the height, because it's going to be basically area. This is for a circle, and this is going to be the circumference times the height, and that's going to be the side. Okay, basically it's one whole thing. If we unroll it, it's going to look like that. And so this is the circumference, and this is our height. Okay, so that's what that's going to look like. And so what is circumference? Do we remember what that is? Well, circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Okay, so that means we can start plugging in and and plug that into here for circumference. And so area is 2 pi r h. And at that point, what we can do is uh, let's, let's also plug in our things. So we're going to have to add all our surface areas together. So we have the first one, pi r squared. Okay. Now, what do we know about that one? Well, we know uh, that's area of the circle. And we know there's two of those because we have the top one and the bottom one. And so then we also have the area of the thing here. So that's 2 pi r times h. Well, we solve for h here. So let's multiply that out there. 40 over pi r squared. Okay. Now, pi will cancel. One of the r's will cancel. And so we get 2 pi r squared plus. Now that's going to give us 80 over r. Okay. Now that's just the surface area. Now if we have the uh, cost built in there, remember we have a cost, one cent per square inch for the cylinder part and four cents per square inch for the tops and bottoms. So that means surface area um, with the cost included is going to be 2 pi r squared times 4 cents per square inch plus 80 over r times 1. Okay, so that gives us here we have now 8 pi r squared and then plus 80 over r. Now, if we again we put that in terms of x, that's 80 pi 8. Where did I get 80 pi? eight pi x squared, so we know how to plug it in a calculator, plus 80 over x. And what we want to do is find the minimum cost. And so that's going to give us what we need to do, our equation we need to do in our calculator to do the minimum. And so if I can remember that equation. All right, so that was 80 divided by x. And then we had a plus 8, and we have pi, and we had uh, x squared, I believe. Okay, 80 over x, yeah. And so what does that look like? Uh, it doesn't tell me anything there, so let's, let's kind of expand that. Let's say we go from, uh, I think the x might be fine. Let's do the minimum here. So let's go minus 200 to Oh, minus 200, uh, 200, 100, and let's see what that does. All right, so now we have something. And so we need to minimize it 
And so that's where we're going to minimize off of. So second trace, minimum three. So let's say that's our X for left bound. That's going to be our X for the right bound. Somewhere in between is going to be our minimum. And so it says our X is going to be 1.16 and our Y is 102.8. So let's go back over here. And it said <clears throat> X was going to be 1.16 and I think it was a seven or something like that after that. So basically that's going to be our X, which is what, well, we said X was our radius. And so our radius of this is going to give us 1.1, uh, let's go ahead and say seven and it's inches. And so that's going to be the radius to yield the minimum cost. And then our minimum cost was going to be what we plugged into that, and that was the 102 point, uh, I think it was about eight. Okay, and that was gonna be the surface area uh, with the cost included. Okay, but the key all they really wanted was our radius of 1.17 inches for our cylinder. And then we could get our height. We could plug that in. If we plugged it into H over here, uh, then we would have H equals 40 over pi times 1.17 squared. And plugging that into my calculator, that gives me 40 divided by pi times 1.17 squared. So that's gonna be, the height is going to be roughly 2.96 inches. And so then we could come up and make sure everything worked out there. But again, this is the key number, 1.17 inches for our radius of the circle.